The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Hey, it's Fight here with a cup of tea, lots of wind in the background, and a presentation on the number one biggest marketing mistake you can make, also known as It Only Takes One Ad. This is inspired by actually something I've observed more and more in the marketplace, that it really typically only takes one ad for a business to not only succeed, but sometimes take off out of nowhere. I'm going to give you one example right now. Um, you know, when I tell you I'm loving it, you instantly know what it is. It's McDonald's, right? And yes, McDonald's wasn't built on this one slogan. It sounds like a slogan, but it's more than that. It's basically the heart of the entire marketing campaign that has pretty much dominated, well, as far as I can think back, their marketing. I'm loving it has pretty much defined for the last, at least if you talk to my kids, that's for them, that's McDonald's. So that generation, for them, McDonald's is I'm loving it. So when I say this, it only takes one ad, it's usually an, an angle, it's a hook, it's an idea, something where suddenly, boom, an entire business is built around this. And yes, I know McDonald's is an extreme example. Of course, they weren't built on this. But the fundamental idea is there that you it only takes that one idea. So the reason behind this is that a lot of people are exposed to this message that, well, you can go and hack someone else's funnel. You go and copy the funnel. Neil Patel, the other day, you know, he's a fairly, fairly well-known person in uh, whatever it is, social media, online marketing, uh, has millions of followers. He goes out, well, you know what, you, all you need to do is you go to uh, Facebook, uh, you look at what other people are running in terms of ads, and you copy them. And I'm going, dude, that is such a rubbish rubbish message because what you're doing there is you're copying what works for them and typically this it only takes one ad thing works for one company it works for one person it works for one particular combination of you know the, the product creator their particular audience their circumstances and when you go out and I'll show you exactly why that is in a second why that fails um, if you then go out and try to copy this and model it in almost all cases it fails so this is the big picture this is what this presentation is about it's really if I think back now to when I got started I truly believe this is the biggest marketing mistake you can make and I have made. I went out and went, look, let me model what other people are doing. Here's my personal story. When I got started, I thought, all right, what am I going to write about on my blog? Back then, it was all about blogging. All right, blogging and SEO. What do I write about? So I knew of this gentleman called Drayton Bird, one of the greatest living copywriters in the world. Um, and I thought, all right, what? You know, he's got a blog in English. I'll go to his blog. I'll read his stuff. I'll spin his articles, put my own spin on it and publish it as my own. And I managed to do about two of those blog posts and then it just went, oh, man, I can't do this. This is awful. It is it is not me. Right. I was trying to hack his thing. But very, very, I mean, ignore the fact that it's unethical. And, you know, fortunately, my my ethics kicked in very, very quickly and said, look, sod this, you can't do that. But even then, Drayton's message works for him because he is Drayton and people love Drayton for whom he is or who he is. And I now have exactly the same thing. People like me for who I am. I don't need, I can't go out and be someone else. So. That as an aside, as an introduction, I truly believe that funnel hacking or copying someone else's marketing, whether it's just the ads or whether it's the, um, you know, the entire funnel, the entire product, whatever, it is a fundamentally stupid idea. And in this presentation, I'll show you why it is stupid and what you should be doing instead. So if I can capture my mouse. Um, I said it on the front page is one biggest marketing mistake. Actually, it, it falls into or it has subcomponents. It has about five big mistakes. So the first one truly is don't do what the masses do. It is copying what other people are doing. And I'll show you exactly why that is actually the critical piece. That is the fundamental mistake people are making. Then I'll show you how to if you want to go and do funnel hacking, how to do it, how the pros do it, how they do it properly and successfully. 
to the tune of billions of dollars versus the amateurs who, you know, fall for that Neil Patel message and go, oh, yeah, I'll copy someone else's ad and then end up not getting any results. Then I show you how pretty much anyone can test their way to success. Um, it's basically the answer is like, okay, if I've been doing it amateur style, how do I become a pro? That's what point number three is, because most people unwittingly stay in amateur land. Um, then I want to show you, and it kind of it will be obvious why I'm talking about social media. Um, it is leveraging the power of social media in a very clever way. And then finally, in the beginning, I said, let's bring this all around to the core point. It, it truly is about having one core funnel. It is about having one core message, one hook, one. And really what it is, is one traffic to offer match. If you can figure out a pocket of people who have a common problem and you figure out a message that resonates with them and package up a nice offer where they go, that's a no brainer for me. You are done. You are set for life. And that is precisely what this thing is about. The it only takes one ad is really that thing. Figuring out that pocket of people who have a common problem, figuring out the message that will resonate with them, and then putting a, an appropriate offer in front of them that they go, well, I'd be foolish not to take advantage of it. Alrighty, let's dive in. Number one, don't do what the masses do. What I mean by this is a lot of people go out and do what everybody else is doing. And this turns out is causing the problems you're trying to solve in the first place. When you think about marketing, the type of marketing you're trying to do at the moment, um, you will experience a lot of sales resistance. You will experience that people are bouncing off your pages. They're not paying attention to your ads. I mean, you look at the average ad on Facebook, anything above a 1% click rate is considered a successful ad. Meaning even with all the targeting you can do on Facebook and all the cleverness of Facebook's algorithm. And it, believe you me, that is very, very, very clever. With, with all of that in place, you can only get 1% of people to pay attention. And there's an underlying problem. Basically, there is inbuilt sales resistance. People don't want to be sold to, and they keep seeing the same stuff over and over again. They are bored with it. They're fed up with it. They find it yucky. They find it repulsive, and they don't pay attention to it. And of course, once you go down the route, then you know the 1% who pay attention to you, a very small percentage will actually then sign up to your list and read your emails and keep opening your emails and never mind buy something from you, right? So it turns out the marketing you're using, the marketing that's being taught out there in the marketplace, and this is the key thing, the marketing you are in all likelihood copying is causing these problems in the first place. And I'll show you in a second why that is. This whole thing kind of got, or I got conscious on what this is when I read a quote by Napoleon Hill where he basically talked about the idea that in almost all cases, when you're doing something that is worthwhile pursuing, you should be doing the opposite of what everybody else is doing. Because what everybody is doing, and they're usually copying what everybody else is doing, is not successful. Take, for example, weight loss. Right? If weight loss did work, well, we wouldn't have such a huge weight loss problem and a massive, massive weight loss um, industry. The stuff that most people do doesn't work. Yet when you go out, it's like, hey, what do you do for weight loss? Well, I'll do this. Okay, I'll copy you. I'll do what you're doing. It's like, for fuck's sakes, it clearly doesn't work. And the same thing applies to marketing, right? Almost everything you see out there, and this is the key thing, is based on an outdated marketing model. I'm going to spare you the details, but when you look at this, this is a, um, a graph from Philip Kotler. Philip Kotler is one of the absolute greats when it comes to marketing. He is right up there with Peter Drucker. In fact, when Peter Drucker died in, oh, I think it was 2009 or something along those uh, lines, um, they had a big, you know, whatever you want to call it, a farewell thing. And Philip Kotler was one of the keynote speakers. So he is right up there. And this is one uh, from one of his books, Marketing 3.0. Uh, I'm in the process of reading Marketing 4.0. And basically what you're seeing here is that marketing evolves. Marketing lives and breathes and adapts to how the market is evolving, right? And 
although this graph only goes to 2000s, of course we have moved on dramatically since then. The problem is that almost all marketing that's been taught out there in the marketplace is based on the stuff that was developed in the somewhere between the 60s and the 80s. It is basically direct response marketing. I'm going to spare you the, the whole history of it, but the fundamental issue with that model is that it was very much based on sales. And the reason for that is you only had newspapers. That was the main medium. And in a newspaper, you cannot engage with an audience. You cannot tailor your um, product or service and your marketing message to individuals. You basically had to go and exploit hardwired responses like urgency and scarcity and bonuses and all that good stuff. All the things you see in today's marketing, they were developed back then because the newspaper was a one-way medium and they di it didn't allow for any interaction. It didn't allow for anything else. And yet, that is precisely what everyone is doing and using. I mean, think back to the last big, whatever, client attraction course you looked at. Any product, it is full of bonuses and scarcity and urgency. Why? Because the product creators, the marketers, that's what they've learned. They learned why you should be using urgency and scarcity and bonuses, etc. And guess what? Ask anyone, anyone who wants to do lead gen or client attraction online, they'll go, man, there's one thing. I want to get rid of, and that is being salesy, being seen as salesy. Well, guess what? The, right in front of you, you're looking at it. That is the cause, the root cause of salesiness and yuckiness. It is because we're using an outdated model. So, point number one, and that I truly believe is the biggest mistake. If I could travel back in time and change one thing, I, you know, the starting with my, hey, I'm copying Drayton Bird's, uh, Drayton Bird's first and second blog post, right? It would be not to model what everyone else is doing, but instead at looking, what is it we're truly trying to do? And that is in 2019 and beyond, we're, we need to do marketing, proper, solid, fundamental marketing. Marketing is pre-qualifying, it's qualifying, it's showing people up front if it's for them or not. I cannot begin to tell you how often I've seen in, in the beginning in my own business, but now in clients' businesses, where they have to deal with refund rates off the charts, where they have massive churn rates in their SaaS businesses. Why? Because they're attracting in. They're not attracting in. They're pulling in. They're sucking in all kinds of prospects who are not qualified. And I'm not saying this in any negative way. That it, it's not meant to be neither a judgment about the businesses nor about those people who get sucked in. It is a fact that urgency and scarcity and bonuses do work. And as a result, a lot of people sign up for programs, they buy courses and end up going, I don't know what I was doing. Many years ago, I was asked to do a, a guest post, if you like, or it wasn't a post, it was a guest coaching session for someone who had a $5,000 coaching program. So people in there you know, paid $5,000 and every week there'd be uh, some content from the guru himself. And I was invited in to do a special on email marketing. All right, I come along. And afterwards, there was a ton of feedback. I got a ton of feedback, personal messages, people saying, man, that was the best content I've ever had in this program. That was awesome. You know, da, 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 da. So I asked one of them, Andrew, hey, Andrew, why did you sign up for this program in the first place, the $5,000 thing? Because I knew back then that Andrew is actually a fairly good marketer himself. And he told me, I have absolutely no idea what went through my mind when I signed up. And that's the key thing. Urgency and scarcity and bonuses do work, but they have one fundamental problem. They work so extremely well that you get a lot of unqualified people in. And this may have not been critical in the past, but it is becoming seriously critical now because the cost of acquiring customers is getting so expensive that you simply cannot afford to have refunds and chargebacks and a huge churn rate. You need to start focusing on those who are a good fit from the word go. So when you pay for them, because that's effectively what you're doing, at some point you're paying for them in terms of money or with your time. Once they have come in, you know, they, you need to recoup the investment you've made. And the moment or as long as you keep attracting people who are not a good fit, and that's what you're doing with these outdated marketing techniques, you are basically blowing a lot of money down the drain. You're throwing it out of the window. 
the new model, and it's it's not on this thing here. It, marketing has truly moved on. We are at a critical point in in terms of you know I'm using as a common example Facebook advertising because pretty much any business can advertise and should advertise on Facebook. The point is that the cost of advertising on Facebook has gone up so dramatically that very soon you're not even going to be able to compete if you have a product that breaks even or makes a small profit on the front end. The cost of acquiring a new customer is going to be so high that the only way you will eventually make a profit is by truly generating long or high lifetime value clients, people who stick with you and not only stick with you, but also give you testimonials and referrals that you know, make your future advertising and, and marketing easier. And also, uh, sorry, and, and give you the referrals that is basically free traffic. That's the only way you will be able to com uh, compete on Facebook, simply because the cost, the competition has gone up so high that the prices are going so high. So. I know that's a lot of information, but this is absolutely critical. And like I said, if I could travel back in time, this is the one thing I would absolutely change. I got enamored with the marketing techniques. I was you know, excited about, hey, let's use Cialdini's reciprocity thing. Let's give away a free report and then pitch them some stuff. I was excited about urgency and uh, bonuses. I saw it with my own eyes that this stuff works. It worked back then. It works now. It will work in the future. But the big point is what I just said in the last couple of minutes. What matters today in 2019 and beyond is no longer whether you can convert someone right now which we all can. What matters is that they stick with you for a long time, that they continue to get value from you and thus provide a high lifetime value to you, plus giving you testimonials, success stories that make your future marketing easier and more effective, plus referrals. Alrighty, with that out of the uh, out of the out of the way, that is, I guess, the biggest stumbling block. And I encourage you to go and take this seriously. Move away from the idea of doing sales or selling, because the stuff that's being told out, uh, taught out there is fundamentally selling. And it is because, well, that's an, an, an old model. model. People didn't need to do proper marketing. Go and study Peter Drucker. People, just go and look for quotes by Peter Drucker, right? Very, very important ones. The core one, I guess, is the, uh, the quote, uh, the purpose of marketing is to make selling superfluous. A lot of people look at that and go, yeah, that makes sense. I'll do marketing. And then they don't do marketing. They do, oh, here's a, you know, a trip wire and here's an upsell and downsell. That's not marketing. That is selling. All right. Point number two. That's kind of a sub point. But before I dive in, I will take a sip of very weird tea here. This is the only one that was left and was cumin, fennel and aniseed. Wow. All right, point number two, let's assume you saw the message by, you know, the, the various players, Neil Patel, um, ClickFunnels, Russell Brunson, hey, you know, have funnel hacking, just hack this funnel, copy it, and you will make tons of money. Yeah, bullshit, you will. You know, there are a handful of successful case studies. There are the poster boys and poster girls who succeeded, but it's a tiny, 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 tiny proportion who succeeded. The vast majority of people do not succeed with funnel hacking. So I'm going to show you how the amateurs do it and how the pros do it. Or actually, I'll start with the pros. I've got a link for you here. Ready, Fire, Aim is a book by Michael Masterson. Michael Masterson is a, he goes, he has a pseudonym. I don't know if Michael Masterson is the pseudonym or the other name, who cares? He is, I believe, a co-founder of Agora Publishing. Agora Publishing is a billion dollar company. They make a billion dollar plus per year publishing information. They are in the financial newsletter niche, right? A billion dollars selling information. Can you imagine that? Just you write one newsletter and send it out to hundreds of thousands of people and they all pay you a good fee every single month. Beautiful. Now, I encourage you to go and read that article. I'm not going to go through all of it. There's a lot of advice in there on how to get started as an entrepreneur. Very, very good points. It's written by one of their top copywriters, but I'll highlight a couple of points for you. And that is, they have a, it's a, it's a law. 
it's like a, a do this or get fired law in their business and that is any copywriter who comes in they start with something that is proven to work in their marketplace not someone else's but in their marketplace and until they have proven one thing that works in their marketplace they don't do anything else the amateur on the other hand goes and says well i'll copy this entire funnel over there or i you know, i've heard about tripwires and otos and upsells and downsells and webinars and all of this i go away and build the entire thing agora publishing the pros go in and say we've got this one offer here that works and it works in this in a whatever in a written format let's see what happens when we put this into video format we're not going to come up with a new hook we're not going to come up with a new offer we're not going to target a new audience we're not going to build a new upsell a downsell or anything the only thing we do is we take what is proven namely the sales message over here and we put it into video format and see what happens that is one example of what they do right they take something where they absolutely 100 percent know this works and then they apply an extra step so when they start developing something from scratch they take their very best guess they try a couple of things and they now from all these alternatives they figure out what works best and then they refine it until that very first thing works so to give you an example in a sales sequence in a sales funnel you would have as a first step an ad and people click on it they come to a landing page and on that landing page you have a headline and a summary and then you have a call to action and then people let's say they can sign up to your email list and then you have a welcome email and then you have a, a thank you page and you have you know all that kind of stuff they don't build out any of this stuff well they build out some of it namely the ad and that's it until they have proven that there's an ad where people respond and the right people respond to it in the right way they're not doing any of the other stuff why bother it's a waste of time it's a waste of energy it's a waste of money and this is the key thing the amateurs go well i'll build the whole thing i think i know what people want if there's one thing and now we come back to drayton bird i have had the great pleasure and privilege of talking to drayton i interviewed him um it was during some world cup it was quite funny he was in a pub he was on the phone it was such a bizarre interview but it was brilliant absolutely brilliant i think italy played so you can imagine how noisy that was uh, i interviewed him about the the fundamentals of marketing and what makes it work and at some point i remember asking drayton what's the big secret what's the the one thing you can tell me what is the big secret of making marketing work and he told me fight the big secret is that you cannot know you will not know however the even him with decades and decades of in the trenches advertising and marketing experience cannot predict how a market is going to respond but he said fight the market is more than willing to tell you you put a message in front of your market and it will respond or it will not respond and that right there is what you want to find out that's the only thing that's your mission as a marketer most marketers go out and say look I need to go and persuade someone to do something again a sign of an amateur the amateur focuses on the how can I persuade someone the professional goes two steps removed from that I'll spare you the details but the the professional starts looking at what is going on in their lives how can I figure out what they are truly concerned with so i can ultimately give them to the solution to that problem that's the only thing they want to find out newbie goes hey here's another persuasion trick i've seen if i use a countdown timer on this page awesome they're going to be blown away the professional goes countdown timer gives me no insights into what problem people are struggling with and how to solve it hence they're not going to bother they're going to bother with I'll use a totally different angle I put it in front of him like Drayton Bird says you put it in front of people and they will respond or they will not respond I'll give you some pointers on how to do that in a second anyway the pros start with something that is proven to work and then to build on it step by step they modify one tiny thing so earlier I said well earlier a minute ago they start with one ad and once they've got that dialed in in the next step they go right let's send them to a landing page where we have one headline at the top 
right? Okay, you, with a landing page, you probably build out the entire landing page, but there is not a massive landing page with a massive sales letter and retargeting, none of that. No, right now we have a headline, we have a call to action and people can sign up or not. And that's the only thing they figure out, uh, focus on right now. Have we nailed what is on people's minds? Are they willing to give us their email address? Yes or no, right? They don't bother creating the product that could be on the thank you page. They don't bother with, you know, authority credentials. They don't bother with upsells and downsells, welcome sequences, indoctrination sequences, retargeting, blah, blah, blah. Why? Because at this point, you haven't figured out what the right message is anyway, right? So any time you invest in any of the other stuff is wasted time. And this is the key thing. They only test candidates for big swings. They want to know, am I massively closer to figuring out what is on people's minds? What problem are they trying to solve? And can I communicate to them that I have understood what it is they're trying to solve and then give it to them, right? If you go out and add a countdown timer, yes, you may get a swing of one, two, three percent. Hey, if you're lucky, you get a swing of five percent. Agora are not interested. They focus on one thing and one thing only, and that is truly nailing the hot button. The majority of that pocket of people they're targeting are struggling with. And that is where you get the 50% or more swings, not by fiddling with headlines and call to actions and that kind of stuff, right? It's the big swings comes from understanding what people are struggling with. Whew. It is time for another sip of delightful, uh, warm, hot beverage here. Alrighty, point number three, and now I'm speeding up. Right? We've gone through the two most important parts. Number three, I truly believe anyone, including you, can test their way to success. Because you might now say, and rightly so, I believe, that, well, you're not Agora. You're probably not making a billion dollars a year. Otherwise, you would not be on this, you know, not be listening to me. So how could anyone who is not at a billion dollar level test their way to success? Well, the big secret is not that you need to be creative. This is the key insight, right? I... I have read all, no, I wouldn't say all the books, but I've read, you know, the, the, the power of the hook and or whatever it's called, the, 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 the one with the legendary story of the, the pizza, uh, well, what's it called? The, <laughs> it's so legendary. I've already forgotten the, you know, it, the pizza delivered in whatever it is, half an hour or the pizza is free, that legendary hook, right? So I've read all those books and I always thought it's about creativity. It turns out it's not. And it took me a long time to figure out that it truly is about engaging, engaging and listening. I'll give you one example. We used to run workshops for the sales reps for newspapers. So we'd go out and teach sales reps how to sell better to local businesses. And usually we'd come along and be introduced as the, you know, the newbie learning the ropes, uh, sitting there and listening. And of course, you know, my job as a coach really was to listen what the sales rep was doing, what they're not doing, and then later on help them refine that thing. So I remember going into a shop in a place called Mönchengladbach, middle of Germany, into a luggage store. And this was a luxury luggage store. So the conversation, which I'll cut short for you because it was extremely painful, went on for about half an hour. But the, the gist of this conversation was the sales rep would say, well, look, here is my best offer. I can give you this ad for the following price. It's awesome. And the response back would be, well, that's cool. But I need to make sure that you convey the quality of the store and the sales rep all they heard was, well, there's an objection. I must handle the objection. And the only way he knew how to handle an objection was to lower the price and add more bonuses. It was sales 101. It was, you know, lower price, uh, two ads for the price of one, a free advertorial, color for the price of black and white. He kept going and upping, stacking the offer. And yet the, the luggage store owner did not buy it because... The one thing he did not have answered was his question, are any of these ads going to convey the quality of my store? So as an outsider, of course, it's a lot easier as a coach to stand there and listen to this. It was from word one, from sentence one, it was obvious that this guy was so proud of his own store that 
That's the only thing he cared about. He didn't really care about getting clients in. If there were any clients, they had to almost qualify to get into a store. He was so proud of this. And if you ever do any business with local businesses, if you do local business consulting, you will find this. I would say about a third of all businesses are there because they really enjoy the thing they're doing. And they don't want to do business with just anyone. They want to do business with people who appreciate what they bring to their store. You know, they appreciate why they built a store. And that's the key thing. It took me quite a while. And th that was a very good learning experience for me as well as a coach, standing there and seeing how this plays out in practice, where you suddenly see, man, I we all know that we should be doing active listening. But if you don't know how to listen and what to listen for, you're screwed. Right? That, that sales rep was standing there and going, well, I don't know. It, that sounds like no objection to me. Let me lower the price. And in the end, there was no deal. So. The reason I'm telling you this and highlighting is truly anyone can test their way to success. I said on the previous slide, the pros, all they do is they take one idea, they build on it and they test different angles. And what they do is they test vastly different angles. They don't go with, you know, Ooh, do you like bread or do you like bread that's toasted or do you like bread with butter? No, they go, do you like bread or do you like pasta or do you like rice? Or maybe even more extreme, do you like bread or do you like you know, vegan protein powder? Or do you like uh, strange tasting teas that are made with, what was it? Fennel, aniseed and cumin. Yeah, yum, right? That's what I mean by vastly different angles. I'll give you a couple of examples in a second. The point is you need to go out and engage with an audience and you listen to what it is they are talking about and then you test different angles. Um, and you do all of that, and that's what I've mentioned earlier, in my opinion, the best platform for doing this is Facebook. That's where people hang out these days, right? In the good old days, I've had so many clients. Another client I had is a, actually I'll tell you the story in a second, but I'll, I'll refer to him right now. So Dave is a plumber from the UK who needed some help with his marketing. And I found him on a forum, like in the good old days, <laughs> you had to go to forums. You had to hang out on forums and you, you post and you contribute and uh, you first had to build up a reputation and then people started listening to you. These days, man, you are so lucky. You go to Facebook and you can start engaging with pretty much any audience anywhere you like. So that's why I'm saying anyone can go and test their way to success simply by going to Facebook putting out good content that fits these criteria. You know, it fits different angles and you're then willing to engage and listen. By the way, this the secret is not creativity. Incidentally, also comes from Agora, right? That very sentence there, they, they've got a whole, they've got this uh, copy circle or something that's uh, called, I'm, I'm part of. Um, it's the first thing they tell you. All their copywriters, it's not about creativity. It's about listening, 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 listening. Some people call it research, but you know, whatever it is, that initial phase where you go, I am getting out of my own head. I stop listening to my own assumptions. Um, and you know, don't get me wrong, it is natural. When you know your product inside out, when you know what you can bring to the table and how you can help other people, you are so keen to help them and you're so keen to tell them about it. Here's my example, right? I used to work at Siemens. Uh, we used to do a lot of transatlantic flying and as a result, there was a lot, lot of jet lag in the office. So one day I go, right, yeah, I'm fed up with this jet lag, especially coming back from the US. Usually we'd fly over to Chicago or something like that. That's a, like seven, eight hour flight. Uh, yeah, seven, eight hour flight. So, you know, whatever it is, seven hour time difference. And then you have that whole four o'clock in the morning nonsense going on. So do a bit of Googling. Um, well, that's the beginning of Google time. And I find this wonderful book. Um, I forgot the name now. It's the jet lag cure or something like that. It's a, a Charles Errett. That's it. Charles Errett, E-H-R-E-T the jet lag program, something along those lines. It's a tiny, tiny book, just a couple of pages. You can get this for $3 on Amazon and it works like gangbusters. I mean, it's absolutely mind blowing. So I'm thinking, right, I'm going to be such a superstar, right? I'm going to go into the office, show everyone how they can cure jet lag overnight. And everyone feigned interest and they went, yeah, that's very interesting. 
nobody bought the co uh, book and nobody ever did the program. Why? Because I went in there guns blazing, telling them what they should listen to instead of listening to what it is they actually wanted. And it turns out a lot of people actually liked the attention of, oh man, you poor thing, you've just come back from Chicago, you must be jet lagged, and here's an extra cup of tea, etc., etc. Right? I had a fantastic product and a shitty message for the right market, and as a result, no one listened to me. Alrighty. So, you might now think, all right, fight, I get it. I should be doing ads. I should be doing different ads. I should be, actually, I shouldn't even be doing ads. I should be developing my, you know, these little funnels from the word, or from the ground up. I should be doing an ad first or a message, see if it resonates. Once I've got that, I get to a landing page. Then I, again, figure out if that's truly the message that resonates with my core pocket of, of my target audience etc 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 and i also get that probably the facebooks of this world is a fantastic place to do it because i can engage i can listen i put out content i i get responses and i can tell you this you will get responses you will never ever expect it goes back to what drayton bird says sometimes you put out content where you think you know this should be such a home run crickets and sometimes you put out content where you go yeah it's going to be okay and it it blows up it goes absolutely nuts um the other day i posted something a picture about um <laughs> my okay i have to say this quietly right my, my, my kids i'm in the home office my uh, kids are teenagers and as a result sometimes the things they promised they were going to do like washing up the dishes don't happen exactly like i had imagined it would happen so one particular time it did not at all happen like i thought it was going to happen so I post this picture of the not happening on facebook with a little note underneath saying hey uh, by the way you know next time i get asked can you drive me to xyz i'll i'll say yeah and i drive them halfway and then chuck them out and drive back because you know half job half done and i thought it was kind of semi-amusing and this thing blew up absolutely through the roof i mean you know so many parents with teenagers went and <laughs> i thought i was the only one so okay cool the other day um I came up with a apparently crap joke about vegans. Um, I thought it was hilarious. I got five people who were interested. I mean, thank you very much. So it goes to show you cannot predict of how a particular audience is going to respond. So if you know, now we come back to this here. You might say, I get all of this. But really, I don't want to build a Facebook page. I don't want to spend ages on Facebook. I don't want to post all this stuff. And I, I think you shouldn't, right? I personally don't. I mean, you should. Okay, so let me quickly step out of this presentation here. I would say number two important thing. So this whole presentation runs under the guise of the most important marketing lesson I have learned. And that was not to listen to what the market is doing, not to copy what the market is doing, but instead of actually focusing on marketing fundamentals, the number, number, whatever you want to call it, B or, you know, at the same level of importance, but not to do with marketing at all. Uh, you know, when it's more in the entrepreneurial area is to recognize is to recognize and accept what your strengths are as quickly as possible when i look at now after doing this since well it's a, a good dozen years now uh, yeah just so i could use a fancy word here dozen um yeah i started doing this being self-employed in 2007. it took me a long long time to truly get what i was good at for me it is funnel hacking interestingly but in the sense of pulling them apart and figuring out where the bottlenecks are where um you know a certain marketing message doesn't uh, fit in with the flow of the rest of the whole thing that is my strength and it i'm absolutely in flow when i do it however it took me far too long to figure that out a long long time i was trying to offer all kinds of other services um you know oh yeah of course i can help you with your facebook oh, of course i can help you with that and this and the other i should have right from the word go said dude if there's one thing i'm good at it's and the reason i'm good at it is because m my brain is hardwired in a certain way right everyone's brain is hardwired in a certain way and it's not something i'm proud of it is the way it is 
I'm grateful for it, and now I can leverage it. Thank you very much. That's all there's to it. So my brain is very good at picking up inconsistencies. If you show me pricing tables, you know, whatever, uh, in shops where some numbers are slightly off, uh, timetables, I my brain just goes, dude, there is something wrong here. Go and have a look. And typically I find a mistake. The other day I saw... Uh, a tram map, you know, sort of little trains running in the in the area here. I live in southern Germany. They, you know, across southern Bernie, uh, Germany, bordering on France and Switzerland. So they've got a train map for three countries, all kinds of little trains running. And they had little symbols for the different train stations. Okay, this is a long distance train. This is a, you know, local train, blah, 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 blah. And without thinking about it, my brain just went, look, that symbol over there, that makes no sense. And lo and behold, it was nowhere else to be seen on the whole map. I'm not saying that to brag, but it took me a long time to realize what my brain is good at, what I'm good at. And that is the one thing you should be focusing on. So that is a very roundabout way of telling you, should you be doing social media? And the answer is no, you probably shouldn't. Unless that is where you are strong at. My brother lives on social media. He is social media. He is such an extrovert. He, he not only loves, he craves social media. His job is um, being a commentator slash announcer at major live events. So he goes to the triathlon world championships. He's in the Hawaii on the finish line. Actually, last time he was in the TV truck coordinating and commentating on 14 monitors at the same time, like 14 cameras. He's the one on the microphone. He loves the buzz of the crowd. Now, for him, social media, constantly tweeting, and um, except he's younger. For him, it's, uh, what is it, Instagram, right? That's where they live, They're them young folks. That's what he's good at. So he should be doing that. But for most entrepreneurs, especially the introverted ones, you should